So hello again, I'm Scott and uh, I'm a comic illustrator and I also uh, illustrate children's books as well. And this is Georgia and I'm a comic writer. And uh, this is Bounce Off. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, something that we enjoy doing in the area that we live in. But I, I mentioned before that I'm a, an illustrator and I also work on children's books. Uh, I'm kind of excited. I'm just starting today on another one. Uh, from our Brianna series and uh, I got a sample here because I'm I've got set up for some research reference but uh, Brianna gets a guinea pig is one of the books in our series that we uh, publish ourselves on uh, Brianna and uh, George do you want to mention just briefly kind of like what the Brianna series is about and what makes it unique my idea for the Brianna series was that I had seen a lot of books out there that always seemed like they were inspirational, you know, stories about um, girls that you wanted to be like and girls can do anything. And there's definitely a place for that kind of book. But the idea with Brianna is she's a girl, but she's a, a girl that tends to misbehave and do things that might be a little bit more that reminds me of myself or um things that my my daughter does when she's not always like doing exactly what I tell her to or what the teacher wants her to do. And um, the first book that we did was Beyond the Behavior Chart because they had behavior charts at my daughter's school. And she would come home and say, oh, mom, I went down a peg today. Um, <laughs> or like, there's yeah. this kid, he's always on the bottom. <laughs> Like, oh, was, it, it was kind of like a start to the series watching that because that was something new to us uh, as parents at that time. We were like, what is this behavior chart business? I never heard of a behavior chart before. Not and so, me. yeah. And so we got this idea of doing something like that with a children's book. And then the Brianna character just became so much fun to work with. I, I re the, It is the thing I love about these book series is how that she's not perennially just good um she does things that are wrong but in the end there's a lesson that uh she learns how to be a better child but ultimately when the next book comes out she's already back to doing bad things again so you know it's just you know kids they need direction <laughs> they're not gonna yeah. just be good all the time so, so i told uh, my newsletter audience about what the next title is going to be the next one's going to be called brianna and the number line as uh, number lines are big with Common Core Math, when my daughter was going to elementary school in um, Washington, now we're not in the Northwest anymore and they're not on Common Core Math, but number lines were a big backbone of how you learn math up there. So because it can be a little bit hard to understand, the idea from the new story is both to tell a fun story about learning, but also to kind of give kind of an easier way to maybe think about and look at number lines and get introduced to the concept of using them for math and then subtraction. Yeah. So that'll be coming uh, down the road, not the too distant future. We don't have a date yet uh, for when that's going to get released, but should be this year. Um, speaking about that from, we don't live in the uh, Pacific Northwest anymore. Where we do live is we live in Florida. And uh, it's, it's kind of in that central Florida area, not too far out of Orlando. And we do love a lot of, there's a lot to do here in the central Florida area. And we thought it'd be fun for a change to talk about one of the things that we really like to do. And that would be going to the Disney Springs. So anybody that's not familiar with what Disney Springs is, there's probably not many, but if you aren't familiar with it, that's um, the kind of like their shopping district for the big mega Walt Disney World complex. So the Walt Disney World complex is, uh, an inexhaustible supply of theme parks and restaurants and hotels, but they also have this really wonderful little uh, shopping complex of stores and restaurants that you can go to and just hang out at. It's not just popular with the tourists, but it's very popular with the people that live in the area, it's something that they love to do on weekends and such. Now the people that have been following our Instagrams and, and able to see and really in, uh, like seeing pictures of when we go over down there, um, but we used to live in Florida before this, and it was very different 10 years ago when we were there. So I thought we'd play this fun game where I show you some pictures of some of our favorite things that we used to do there. And then you can see replaced with what is there now. As the Springs as it was when it was Pleasure Island and the, the Disney Village was a very different experience than Disney Springs has become now. 
Very different. I mean, when it, it before even Pleasure Island came around, it was just the Disney Village, and it was basically an opportunity for them to have one giant themed Disney store for the tourists to come to and visit when they weren't inside the theme parks. When I was a child, this is where we would go with my family. We would, we would have our week at the theme parks, and then the last day, which was like the day you check out and you start the long drive home you spend a couple of hours at the Disney village and stock up on stuff. And I always actually found myself really loving that day, even sometimes more than the actual theme parks, because I loved getting stuff. <laughs> so I loved it. My dad hated it. Cause that's when he would spend all his money. Right. Um, but then came along pleasure Island, which was really interesting. That was the brainchild of Michael Eisner at that time. Right. Um, um, pleasure Island was really important when I was a cast member so I was, um, I used to work at the boat at MGM Studios when it was MGM Studios, which is called Men and Bills at the time. And I think they've changed it to Donald's Dockside or something, but the boat's still there and it's at Echo Lake. And we sold at the time tacos and ice cream. Now they sell a whole bunch of different things. It's been all kinds of different restaurants. Um, but the cast members would go out on Friday night or Thursday night. I think Thursday night was um, a discounted cast member night. And we would go to the clubs and you know dance the night away. But I think like the big difference is typically you would eat before you went, not just because we were poor, but because there weren't a lot of options. Uh, the one time I really remember going there and eating was going to Planet Hollywood one time. And it was kind of an expensive meal for us, but it, it was like a big deal. And I think it took us like two hours because it was a long wait before we got in. Mm. Um, just, yeah, there wasn't that much. Was uh, Wolfgang Puck's Express there yet? No, I don't think so. Not that far back. And the they, whole West and, Side wasn't there yet. And Earl of Sandwich wasn't there yet either. Mm -mm. So there wasn't okay. a lot of options to eat at. I don't even remember there being like a lot of very uh, stands, you know. Um, but what I do remember was there being a Jello shot stand outside of Eight Tracks. <laughs> It's not a good combination, is it, to have a lot of, well, I'll just say booze, to be <laughs> drinking and not a lot of food to watch yeah, that not a lot of food. down. Uh, a little bit of short-sightedness on that part. But I will say, I love Pleasure Island. I I'm, I'm kind of miss it. I, I'm not on that camp where I thought it was necessarily a good idea to just get rid of all of it. Um, yeah, there were definitely sure. elements to, plan out, to um, uh, Pleasure Island that I just... I loved and I do miss to this day. There's some parts of it that I'm just practically angry that, that it's gone because it made no sense. And my friend the other day was asking me like, well, how does it, does it feel different? And I said that the feeling is, is that most of the stuff now will shut down around midnight. And if you're not either associated with a bar or a restaurant, by the time you get to around 11 o'clock, the whole thing just starts to feel like it's kind of on its way out. And certainly after the stores close, then they start encouraging everyone to leave. Whereas and that's, when, on, that's when, on the weekend. On and the that's on the weekend. It closes even earlier. But back in the day in like 97, when I was working there that summer, um, things were open until 2 a.m. plus because that's when the nightclubs were open. Let me ask you for your perspective on that, because obviously I wasn't around for that. But did you find that it was mostly cast members taking part in all that at, at like one in the morning? Or were they really getting the tourists to come out from the hotels? It wasn't, you know, I don't think it was really, it is definitely not meant for parents. Uh, and everyone that was hanging out in the village tended to be gone by um, 10 p.m., so everybody that was over in the nightclub, you know, there was maybe like a, I think it was mostly locals that were going and it wasn't all Disney related people. I think most of the Disney people were going on those Thursday cast member nights when you could pretty much be sure everybody else there was also a cast member. But, um, you know, Friday night, Saturday nights, especially places like mannequins kind of had their dedicated local group of people that would go. Anyway, let's get on to the, uh, the imagery. Okay. I'm going to spoilers cut this part section out so we can just go straight to having the really big thing and uh, the shared screen. So and I, I don't know what I'm getting ready second. to look at. I have not seen these slides. So this is kind of a surprise for me. All right. I'm going to share that.
Oh, well, you're going to start off with an easy one. Whoops. In a way. I mean, so the Adventurers Club, uh, just right off the bat, this is the item that I'm most unhappy is gone because this is this was one of the absolute best themed things they had, bar none on property. I mean, the, the, like this is something like practically right out of um, the Jungle Cruise or to that part of the Magic Kingdom. And um, people I, tell you, going I was really confused by this place when I was young and before I became a cast member. When this this op was one of the original things to open in the early nineties, it it always felt like like they said the kids could go in, but it wasn't really meant for that. And I was really confused how it worked. Um, but the the way it kind of operated was there is a bar inside. And you can go and you can sort of hang out there for a while. The intention is that you're supposed to hang out in this middle atrium section and then eventually get moved on into the show portion where there would yeah. actually be tables. But the the weight and the queuing is not clear. And also just the way it looks from the outside is interesting enough. But if you go inside, it's bananas. I this mean, is what the does. interior looked like. Yeah, I mean, so it's the puppetry that would go on. Uh, there would be kind of like the Muppet Show, little bits of stuff would happen around on the walls. But these chairs, like I love these like velvet and sconce chairs that were everywhere. And you could just kind of like sit and lounge and um, have a nice drink. They had these drinks. What were they called? The Kungaloosh. And if you Kungaloosh. ordered it or actually during like this puppet show conversation they would bring it up to everyone would do like this kungaloosh man yeah the cheer it was like, <laughs> yeah, a, it was like yeah. a cheer right i remember that now and what so what was the show like there was a show right like well not really a show but a tour i guess is a better no, way it, there's a show when you go inside there's a stage show there was and no, i still okay. I talk about all this stuff like it's still here as it, i was so much a, a part of my experience for years and years, but um, it was, I think it would mix itself up a little bit over the years and there would be these characters and it was all sort of like 1930s African safari adventure theme. And they would, it would, it'd be kind of like listening to the adventure radio hour now. And wasn't, um, cause you were a cast member at that time. Wasn't this like a hot spot? Like this is something that cast members wanted to work at, wasn't it? Wasn't well, it there was hard a to get in. Yeah, I mean, it's you couldn't be in the college program and get in there and work. This was something where this was permanent people that worked there. It was a permanent cast. It was highly desirable to get in on the cast because you're actors and actors. Yeah, the acting you're acting cast. a role. You're not just checking people out, um, uh, merchandise and stuff like that. So it was. This was definitely the best thing. You starting out with the best thing. At, yeah. Um, I did. Uh, Pleasure Island for sure. It went on now, for years and years, and everyone was deeply upset when it finally went away. And what year did it finally shut down? You know, I, everything kind of shut down together. Yeah, I didn't really look. Uh, it was still there when we left, which one of the reasons that I brought it up. And we left in 2010. I bet if you took a poll, if people did a poll of things that uh, the fans of Disney would love to see come back, if they could pick one thing, this might be very high at the list. So this is what's here now, and we haven't been inside, but this is the Edison restaurant. That and, I was gonna, yeah. You no, know, I was thinking maybe it was gonna be like the, uh, the boathouse or that one that has the mm -hmm. bar inside. So that's no, this. it's over here, closer to the bridge. Which, if you went a little bit over here to the left, you would see that tiny little pizza cafe. I think is what's there, but this is what was re replaced it inside. It looks a little bit like. Um, the dinner show that we used to see in Seattle, I forget what that was called, but it has like people doing theatrics and mm -hmm. swing. Interesting. And, no yeah. idea. I really wouldn't have been able to pick that out. They changed that quite a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they could, they tore down the original structure and completely replaced it. I have not well, been to this restaurant. People say that they enjoy it. Is um, this kind of a steampunk list. style? Yes, it's the one that has like the steampunk style. No, I didn't get a picture of it, but yeah, it's the one on the inside that's it's got all the gears and everything. 
It's a lot like the Chocolate Factory Emporium that we uh -huh. went to at right. Universal. Yeah, that's over in uh, City Walk, Universal City Walk. Yeah, Maybe like we'll that. About Except that there's song. a show. Huh. And interesting. I wonder if that's that smokestack is just show, right? It's not. Really yeah, it doesn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so I brought this up because we wanted to talk about the poster shop, and there are no pictures that I could find at the poster shop. Oh man, the poster shop. But it was around in the area where the Jessica Rabbit sign was. So the poster shop was this little shop area. It, I mean, it was really almost like an alley. It was We're talking like cigar stand size. Very, very tiny little shop that was just kind of nestled in the middle of Pleasure Island. And they sold movie posters there. And not... Not, for the most part, they weren't prints. They were real movie posters uh, that you could get back in the day. And they had not just current live action films, but they had movie posters from the old animated features. And uh, some of them, most of them were like reprints of like, well, uh, reissues. Re-releases. They were most of them were posters they, from the re-releases. Right. Because to get like an original Bambi movie poster would be bananas. Yeah. But, be. Uh, but some of them were, were, um, were first issue. Um, and then we got like a first issue, uh, You're a Good Man, or, or which one was the Charlie Brown one? The the, the title's escaping me. But we got yeah, we got one of the first issue Charlie, Charlie Brown, Brown uh, movie posters uh, from back in the seventies, I guess, is when that came out. But probably the one that we really both really love is some of the movie posters that they had from the old or the original uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit movie. So if you watch that movie inside. Um, the offices on the movie studio, they would have some fake Roger Rabbit film posters from his cartoons. And uh, we have, we, we bought one of them. Um, Herman Sherman's, I think it was one. Yeah. Uh, a little politically incorrect, but, uh, but a hilarious movie poster. And they had all of them. It was fantastic. So was this... your, like, did you went in there, right? Yourself? Or oh, was... like the poster shop? Yeah, lots yeah. of times. Because we didn't know each other at that time. So I'm going to the poster shop on my own with my family and you were going on your own with your family. So it's interesting that we both have that shared experience from separation there. And the Paradiso 37 is um, what replaced that area. And, you know, I really like this restaurant. We need to get back to it. I guess like the problem with the Springs is that there's so many restaurants now. It's like even when something's good, it's forever before you get back to it. It can be. Now, you had a problem with the Paradiso before, uh, and that was they didn't have enough restaurants yet. So I remember when we did go, it was impossible to oh, get that's into crazy. this. crazy. That just shows you how had few... had to sell your second child just to get in. No, it's true, and that, that speaks to how few places there were to eat in the, in the Pleasure Island and the village area at the time is how crazy packed Paradiso 37 was when it was opened. Yeah, there was a time where this was the hottest place on property quite possibly yeah it was um, nuts right before we left it was absolutely crazy before yeah my mother that, died you know we all i think we all went here together that was what year roughly that would have been, like, been 2000. like 2009 okay but is it is this is kind of like a tapas place right i remember it being small plates i think they do have entrees but it it was more of like a modern contemporary restaurant i think it still is yeah. That's a nice bar. Beautiful bar. Yeah. It was, it's a good place. I mean, Disney does a good job with their restaurants. Got to admit. And it's kind of mm -hmm. interesting what they do now where they bring in chefs, well-known chefs, and let them kind of de de design a restaurant for their property. I think that's smart because Disney doesn't need to be in the business of yeah. trying to come up with all of these on their own. Well, Wolfgang Putz was open last time when we were down here. Mm -hmm. the, at least the yeah the both the express and the major restaurant in its original location mm -hmm. um the west side was opening all of those restaurants that were over there um but this one was really like the first one that was in the pleasure island area and so you remember this <laughs> i remember mannequins yeah this would be a really early promo shot of mannequins. And I think is really great about this is this is not what the club felt like at all. Not even by the time that, that I was a cast member in 97. There's like this, it's brightly lit. There's all these young, clean cut looking people there. <laughs> like, 
by the time that I was going there, it was dark and gray and felt like kind of a, a, a meat market, both for, for all kinds of interests. <laughs> <laughs> to put it yeah. <laughs> as vanilla as possible. Yeah. I mean, this is an old shot. Look at these computer screens. I mean, this is oh, like yeah. something from uh, Mr. Scooter and computer chips, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, the this, <laughs> this, this is a promo quite... shot. I don't think mannequins was ever really like this at all. Um, but what it did have was this great revolving dance floor. And that's what everyone was into and why it was such a big favorite. People love that revolving dance floor. Yeah, I don't remember the stage. Did they really have a stage with acts? Yeah, you know, I don't think, not by the time I ever went there, they didn't. I remember there being an upper area and a catwalk, and that probably used to be this stage. But by the no, time uh, that I was going, it wasn't in use anymore. Okay. But yeah, and so this the other thing about this is like you access it like with a fake elevator kind of thing. Like you're yeah. going, like, you weren't really going underground, right? No, I don't think yeah. I think it was really going anywhere. It's kind of like this idea really... that you're going underground to, <laughs> yeah. to the nightclub, and it's like really naughty. But it really yeah. did have its dedicated fan base, though, because I I gotta admit the revolving floor was fun. Yeah, it, it's you know yeah, it's kind of like. You know, I kind of felt like these uh, different nightclubs. I, I get maybe not having all the nightclubs that they had. It it was too many. It, it, they they could they canceled each other out. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't kill them to have one though out there. Yeah, it would be so, fun, and I think it would work. In I my opinion, that. this is the one that should have stayed. And I read that it was, I think, the last one to close. And yeah. Atrax was fantastic. Yeah. Do you have any interior shots of this? No, I looked around. Um, there were a few, but I felt like they might be too privately owned to show. Because I'm it, trying to remember what that was like inside, and I'm having trouble. Was it really kind of disco? Yeah, and it was really dark. Okay. Very dark all around it. Huh. Yeah, I just, you know, very dark nightclub-y <laughs> kind of place is probably not the look disney wants to go for these days <laughs> well, that's why they went the other direction but it was but, this one was extremely popular with cast members why is that i think they gave the best discount but i so i think that there's a way that certain things just kind of become the hangout and you just you know that everybody it also accepted younger people as i remember it it would have certain nights when it would either not have alcohol or I'm not sure what, but would, would accept um, people that were under 21 that go inside. I do have this memory. So the, the principle of how Pleasure Island would work, that it, as I remember it, is that you would go and you'd buy a ticket, you'd buy a pass, and that basically allowed you just to wander and go in and out of these places as you wanted. You didn't have to like buy entrance at each one. Mm -hmm. So when we went as a group, we would just kind of – flip around we go to eight tracks and spend uh 20 minutes and then we'd leave and go to mannequins and spend 10 minutes and then they we give might you a bracelet Atrax. like you'd yeah. buy a bracelet wouldn't you yeah yeah something like that so you had freedom to just kind of wander the whole area street and i don't know if you remember or if you ever did that but they were also kind of known for their uh new year's eve celebration early on yes but that yeah. only lasted i think for three years yeah, because then you had Orlando was growing by that point, and then Universal came around, and they'd have their, and then Church Street became a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, all those things did kind of contribute to kind of pushing Disney and Pleasure Island out. That's right. So this is what's there now. This actually takes up both. Um, oh. This is mostly mannequins, and Atrax this, would have been on the other side. So this is Morimoto's. Yeah, Morimoto's takes up the whole thing. Wow. So I've been inside Morimoto's just like in the door, but I haven't had a chance to eat there yet. Well, I want to. I just haven't had a I chance. think I'd spend the whole time like trying to pick out the interior of mannequins. That's what the I entrance wonder. mannequins would be right there. Wow. I wonder if you could go in and kind of figure out if what the where the revolving floor would be and all that. I it would could. just be I don't, like the, be guesswork, the main I think. dining area, but yeah. yeah. That, that would be your opportunity to find out, okay, really, did you go underground or not? <laughs> because if you go in there and you can start picking no. it all out, you're like, ah, ah. Yeah. 
Right across from this would be Raglan Road now, which is still there and was there when we were here last time. Yeah, when I was a cast member, that was the jazz club. And outside outside of um, the Disney Village, stu uh, well, we'll just call it the um, the main character shop. And I guess those areas like with like the, the Christmas store and two and all that, would Raglan Road still be like the longest tenured thing that's lasted the longest? It's one of the longest things that's been there. It's been very be. successful. Uh, I don't really, I mean, I guess it's that with, coupled with how much people just like Irish pubs and the drinking culture and the music that they bring in. It's the combination of everything probably gives it a little bit more popularity than the jazz club had. Also, I'm pretty sure you needed a little bit more reservation set up to enjoy the jazz club. I don't think it had all of the outs. I know it didn't have all of the outside stuff that Raglan Road has. Raglan Road has the uh, quick service restaurant. It's got the little area outside with a bar where they also have acts. That. The quick service yeah. came later. That did, that wasn't always there. But you're right because I my memory of Raglan Road was it was still sometimes when you were in a pinch to try and find food, Raglan Road was going to be something that you had better shot at getting into than nearly anything else. So uh, it's probably true. And the food was good. Yeah, it uh, is good. Very there. good fish and chips and bangers. You can get bangers and mash there. And it's and great at the restaurant. Happen. It's really good at the quick service. It's a good bar. You know, there's a reason it's been around so long. And they did have musical acts. They still do today. So even yeah. with COVID going on, they, they've brought the acts back and that's nice to see. So, Ka oh, Ka this is Captain Jack. This is Captain Jack's. <laughs> I want to so, see if you remembered it at all as we did go eat there once before we moved that. away. Yeah. Okay. This, and look, they're building Rainforest Cafe behind it. Right. They're building Rainforest Cafe in this image Which, right behind it. Yeah. So that shows how old this is. This was um, a classic seafood restaurant. Yeah. But yeah, you'd walk this, in and they would have cocktail shrimp on ice. This would be the, yeah, so kind of like supper club kind of idea. That, I know, like just a combination a really between old like school. supper club and maybe like um, Red Lobster, that kind yeah. of idea. Not tremendously high end or themed or anything like that. I don't so. remember like it being amazing food, but it was a great view. It was. It was. And, uh, also tricky to get into. This is not this is not a walk in the park that you could just walk up and no. get into this. So, it so was, this was one of the few restaurants that they had in the market area with Disney Village at the time that, that had survived because I mean you could still go to the um, what was Fulton's when we left um, and, in the boat and there was, but there was another restaurant that was like a Disney Village restaurant prior to that in that area and that was long gone. So Captain Jack's was like your best bet. And of course, Rainforest Cafe wasn't open yet. Right. So what's what is here now? So now we just have to look at it from here because it's nothing. Nothing is there. It's a oh, bridge. Man. Where, yeah. Whereabouts would it? Gosh, this is great. This is an aerial view. Where? Where would it be? So there's see where Rainforest Cafe, the uh, volcano is. Oh, yeah, I do. So it would be out in that water area, which is essentially what's there now is the dock for the um, ferry that's coming over from Saratoga, Saratoga Springs. Okay. Wow. Just okay, I nothing see there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Nothing there. What is that that's over there on the, that is the Rainforest Cafe that's kind of yeah. jetting out in the water a bit. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And this, um, what's that mass of red down there right near the bottom? You see that? It's kind of like a Looks almost like um, a playground. What is that? Well, that that's the uh, the boathouse is that blue building there, and I believe right that that red that. area is the hangar, the hangar bar. And you really? and I haven't been in it yet. Okay, interesting. I haven't seen gotten to see too many aerial photos of the whole thing. And do you have any idea how this photo, how recent it is? I don't know. It's fairly recent. I don't think Gideon's no. is in there yet. You can see most of the bar area for Raglan Road, and the it's after the boathouse was completed. So that wasn't that long ago. You can see Dinosaur, too. The T-Rex restaurant? Yeah, Yeah, I can just make that out. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, you got anything else? Like, yeah, so I wanted to surprise you with some really funny old shots. 
Okay. Do you remember, you remember going there as a child? Do you remember the pottery chalet? No, that <laughs> probably predates me. This looks like 1984 right here or something like that. Uh, this could be older than that. This is probably the late seventies. Okay. And there's a, there's a picture there of um, pottery chalet at the Disney village, um, very early Disney village shots. So real quick, what was it? Are you um, literally buying pottery? You're buying like a bowl? Yes. <laughs> are you? Yes. Yes, you are. Just like a clay bowl. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it's like out in the, this is like a scene from yeah. Perry Mason. <laughs> really? Yes, it is. Yeah. So it's just a standard go buy like stuff for your garden that you see on the highway these days. Would have been something like a. <laughs> No. You imagine you go there and you're like, hey, honey, I want to buy a statue. And like, okay, uh, I'll hold on to it for the next two hours while we walk around and then go eat. Right. So I want to give a plug for um, retro Dis Walt Disney World com with these pictures, especially that first one. And I think the last one, because I use I love that site and um, they I follow their Twitter and they regularly post um, pictures that people send in to them from, you know, home movies and home photos and old brochures that they took from all of these way back when and some of it which would have practically predated me and it's it's really awesome yeah that uh, is great this is another uh, one of their shots right here it's a very good question picture. too so i assume you've been here when you were a little girl i was here but i don't remember the pottery chalet okay because i wonder looking at these shots it doesn't look to me like they have anything here that's disney themed like no no, nothing no, at all. Like no. classic Italian statues or something like that. No, and I was recently going through um, one of Retro Walt Disney World's galleries that they posted, and they um, mentioned they had a map, I think, of, of like all, all of the original stores that used to be there. So some of them that were mentioned was a haberdashery, which would have been really just you go in there and, and a guy gets a suit. Oh, that would be cool. Like they showed a picture of like a tailor working on a guy's like you could customize the length of your pants, you know, that kind of thing. They have that now. It's just instead of a suit, you're getting a princess outfit. Right. <laughs> there was a crystal arts. I would have not been able to find an original picture of that. I mean, especially since now there's still a crystal arts style store and it has, you know, but it's all the modern stuff and it would have been entirely different. Just old cutesy goofy glass things back then well the the one that's in there now is almost 100 percent all disney themed yeah and it would not necessarily Christmas. have been back then but there was a lot of stores what they had a lot of them just had nothing to do with disney at all it was really just a shopping village yeah but they always still had the 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 cast store the the mickey mouse store that would have yeah they all... had it <laughs> Yeah, all the and I remember that they would have stuff in that store that not necessarily you'd find inside the theme parks. You'd find stuff in that store that you could only get in that store. It's my memory of that. Yeah, but it would have been it's a lot less intense and smaller than you know World of Disney is now. Yeah, I mean, World of Disney was a big new deal when I was a cast member in '97. Yeah. Just you know, I, I, I do kind of miss, they used to have in the world of Disney and some of those, and, and, and that's true in the Disney stores around the country, they'd have more of those animated mannequins, the animatronics, I should say, uh, for the, the uh, just to um, beautify the store and stuff. And they really got rid of all that. And I, yeah, I miss that. I'm really disappointed in that because those were great. Those were some of my favorite things just to sit there and watch the animatronics of Mickey and Donald moving mm -hmm. around and Chip and Dale and that's, that's too bad. Um, well, before we wrap up, I'm just curious if you had to pick one thing today, if someone was going there to uh, Disney Springs, what is it they should do? Where, where should they eat? What should, they have one mm -hmm. evening there. What should they do? Yeah. I, I hate that question. I have, um, not really gotten to do enough of the new things that are there to feel confident about my answer. Like we went to homecoming for dinner. I really enjoyed it. I'd recommend mm -hmm. it, but I don't know if I'd recommend it over Morimoto's because I haven't been there. <laughs> yeah. It might be better. 
And I remember too, like, so one of my memories is like a, years ago, we actually went there to the House of Blues, which is there, and we got to see Lady Gaga do a concert. And what was amazing was like, this is before she got really big. And so she was doing a concert and it was like in a relatively small room. So, you know, we were only what, 30 feet from her on stage. It was kind of like just hang out. And this newcomer called Lady Gaga was going to come out and perform. (laughs) Yeah. It was right before she did her uh, American Idol show. Yeah. I'd recommend the house of blues. Now the um, outdoor seating area is really nice. They're playing live music the other night. Um, They have, a nice selection of nine to ten dollar hurricanes. They're all, all custom. Now, of course, now they have like Gideon's Bakehouse is like the big thing that's making a lot of waves because it has tremendous wait times and all that. Uh, Eleven hours. <laughs> yeah, and I admit I have not had one. I'm not. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm not waiting eleven hours for a cookie. I don't care how good it is. I'm not. You doing can't have it. sugar I did that before for donuts, <laughs> and I'm not doing it again. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> a long wait for a cookie with a lot of chips on it. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's great. <laughs> diabetes, anybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure they're good. I I do want to try one someday. If you really want to try a Gideon's Bakehouse, they actually have a second location in Orlando. It's probably got a little bit of a less weight if you want to try that. If you if if you're really so inclined, I can't imagine how it could not have less weight. <laughs> <laughs> not possible but um the springs is still a really fun place to hang out in it, it is and it's it is lovely um and uh i i do miss the the poster store and i do miss some of the art there i feel like there's a little bit less adult things uh there that are disney themed to buy than there used to be mm-hmm. they are bringing a lot of other shops that have nothing like there's a tommy bahama store and uh, there used to be a Lululemon store there and um, things like that. And they'd have some Disney theming inside that store, which is nice. But again, there's so many high end shops there that are just kind of like end up being out of a price point. I'd love to see them bring in a few that are not quite as high uh, price point that could like balance out a little bit. All right. Okay. So um it's our little walk through memory lane of Disney Springs. I'll have to go back again soon, right? Right. And get Morimoto's and get it. If you go to the home cooking restaurant, they have a drink that's kind of close to the Congolouche, right? There was one that had blackberry brandy in it. Yes. It's, it's, everything that they do is moonshine. And that, that's something to point out. A lot of these restaurants that are really hard to get into, but you, they actually have walk-up bar set up. So you can go up. You don't have to feel hopeless. You can still go without a reservation to Disney Springs and have a good time. So bear that in mind. Anyway, so I'm Scott Ball, and uh, I'm an illustrator that works in children's books.